Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Jessica Ward King, the Stigma Crusher here. Have you ever had to come to terms with something? Come to terms with the death of a loved one, with the, I don't know, growing up of a child, or for the purposes of this channel, with the diagnosis of a lifelong disorder or even a terminal diagnosis. In terms of this channel specifically, have you ever had to come to terms with a psychiatric diagnosis? And did you successfully come to terms with it? This is what I want to explore today. I sometimes think that I have successfully come to terms with my diagnosis of bipolar disorder. And then sometimes I am absolutely frightfully certain that I have not come to terms with the diagnosis. And these things are not like in linear succession. It's not like I was not certain, but then something happened, life changing, and then I became certain, and then I lived in blissful certainty for the rest of my days. No, this comes like I was certain, then I was not certain, then I was certain again, and then I was not certain again, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. And you might think that these periods of certainty and uncertainty would coincide with periods of wellness and unwellness, or relative wellness and unwellness. They don't. Um, sometimes when I'm well, I will, I will be, you know, certain that I have come to terms with it. And then sometimes when I, even when I'm well, I will be raging about the impact that my bipolar has had on my life and will continue to have on my life and the, how it's not fair that it should have this impact and why me, why should I have this? And, the, and not, not just for, you know, one frightful moment, but this will go on for days or even weeks or sometimes months. And so I wonder, can the experience of coming to terms with something work like this? Can you come to terms with something and then uncome to terms with it and then come to terms with it again and then uncome to terms with it again? Or is it a one and done kind of thing? Because I think that the way that people paint it, or at least the way that I've always understood it, it was it was kind of a one and done thing. It was like a journey. You you know you, you so how I've always understood it is is this: you get the diagnosis, you go through the period of mourning, of grief, of loss, of anger. You know all the five stages of grief or or, or whatnot. Five stages of grief are kind of in question, but there you go. Five stages of grief or whatever you you like, and then. You kind of come through those. You have some kind of life-changing experience where you realize that, you know, your life is, is richer for the experiences that you've had and that you, you, you can live better. And through this experience, you come to terms with your diagnosis or your illness. And you come through kind of the other side. It's like coming through a curtain and all, all is, is, is well on the other side. And then you, you have like, it's like badge. You have come to terms with your illness. And I don't know why I thought that that was the case. That was kind of how, how it worked because now that I'm saying it out loud, that sounds ludicrous because that's just not how things in life work, right? You, that's not how emotional experiences in life tend to work. They don't tend to be one and done. You don't tend to experience grief 
for example, the grief of losing a loved one and get over the grief and come through the other side and be done with it. You experience grief over and over again in waves, waves and waves of grief. And sometimes in the, in the middle, you can be okay and you can think of your loved one and without tears in your eyes and you can smile and you can laugh and you can look at pictures of them. And then you get this wave of grief again and all of those things make you weep with despair. And so why wouldn't it be the same with the grief over a diagnosis that's going to affect the rest of your life because that's what a diagnosis of a chronic mental illness does right it's it may not it may not it may but it may not be terminal it may not be the thing that is going to kill you it is sure as hell's going to try but it's going to affect every part of your life from the moment of that diagnosis, from the moment before that diagnosis onwards because we don't have a cure for any of them for bipolar for, for any of them and so coming to terms with the diagnosis and and I, sh I guess I should have prefaced all this with the reason someone very, very close to me got a, a diagnosis, not a psychiatric one, but a diagnosis and is on the journey of coming to terms with it. And, and that got me thinking about me coming to terms with my, with my illness and, and then got me thinking about how have I come to terms with my illness. But I don't think that it's, I don't think that it's a destination. I don't think that it's a, you know, badge, done. I think that it is an ongoing work in progress that is gonna come in waves because it's grief. And so, and sometimes, and it's, it's unpredictable, right? It's not like only when I'm depressed am I going to get these waves of grief. Grief's not like that. Grief's, grief's not a depressed thing. It's not only depressed people get grief. Sometimes when I'm well, sometimes when I'm euthymic or normal mood, I will get these waves of grief where I will lament all that I've lost and am losing and I'm going to lose because of my illness. All that I can't do and won't do because of my illness all that I wish and wished for and won't have because of my illness. All those things, all those things that I'm grieving for. And I will have to go through that grief. And it will hit me like grief does with anger. There will be a lot of anger. But there will also be that sadness, that despair, right? And there'll be bargaining. I will, I, I will literally, I will sit there and, and speak to my wife and, and try to, to bargain away the bipolar or bargain away aspects of it. I'm like, well, can't, can't I just, if I just don't take my meds, could I do this? Or, you know, I'll, like I'll grasp at straws to try to think of ways out of the grief that I'm feeling, out of the situation. Just like, you know, you would try to bargain away, try to bargain back your dead loved one, which you know you can't do. I, I know I can't bargain my way out of my bipolar either, but in your grief, you will do anything, right? And I really think that this coming to terms with is it's just a nice way of saying grieving. 
it sounds final though, right? I'm, I've come to terms with. It sounds final. I have grieved. I have come to terms with. So I think it's like, maybe maybe somebody in, in communications got a hold of it, you know? Um, somebody mar in marketing was like, we have to make this, this chronic illness thing sound a little better. So let's give them a way to finish this grieving process, to, to finish it and to say that they've come through it and to get to the other side. We'll, we'll give them a term. Let's call it coming to terms with it. Because that is the impression that I always had. And I remember saying, I, I think I may have even said it on this channel, that I've come to terms with my bipolar. When, when, I, was, when I was in a good place and I, and I felt like I'd come to terms with it. I, I remember saying, I've come to terms with my bipolar diagnosis. And I felt a, very accomplished. I felt very like, well, I've come to terms with it. Like I, I you know, leveled up or something. Um, and it's, and I really, it's not like that. I'm going to have to keep coming to terms with it over and over and over again. And I'm uncoming to terms with it over and over and over again. And it's not a failing. It's just the process. At least, at least that's my take on it. I would absolutely love, now I know it's, it's not a common thing to do the commenting here on YouTube or, or, or on Facebook um, or even on LinkedIn. But I would love to hear your take on this. Am I right? Is coming to terms with your chronic illness or anything really, but we'll go with chronic illness. Is coming to terms with your chronic illness something that you have to do over and over again, like grief? Or am I wrong? And is it something that you do and you come through? And do I have something to learn? Please let me know. Because now I'm curious to see whether what I've always thought is wrong, like I'm now thinking, or whether what I think now is wrong. Please let me know. Okay. That's it for this week. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Stigma Crusher.